Now, fundamental to the Medunitzer Oracle is the concept called the Tree of Life, right? The Kabbalists will recognize the tree, the Kabbalistical Tree of Life. Obviously, you know, the, the Kabbalist um, tradition came up out of the ancient Egyptian tradition. So, the original tree was called the Pa'avnitzeru. This is, you know, the Meduna Ted deals with the comedic tree of life. Okay, so basically what this is, is a cosmogram or a cosmogony. A cosmogony is a way to view the whole, a way to understand all that is in existence. This is what the, the term holy came from, as in holy Bible or holy Quran or holy man, etc. What they're talking about or supposed to be talking about is holistic, meaning encompassing all aspects. This is what is, should be meant by the term holy, right? So all that makes up the world, all that is in and around us, the various dimensions of the earth, and the spiritual anatomy of man, is what we're looking at when we are viewing the comedic tree of life. Okay, so now we're going to talk about the tree here in its the structure, the structure that it sits upon. Okay, it's necessary to understand the parts that make up the whole. So this is why we're going to break down the structure. Now at the bottom of the tree we have the tenth sphere. The tenth sphere is called Geb, or in the Kabbalistical is called Malkuth. Right? This basically symbolizes the world on one level, right? The external world that we live in, living on and walking on. Um, on another level, uh, within the spirit or within the, the being of man, it is the actual physical body, right? Geb is the body, the physical body. Okay, so this can also further be broken down into the sensory aspects of the body, you know, meaning like the or uh, the, the the ionosphere of the earth right that that the sensory aspect that receives the influences of the other planets right exists in man as well right that would be called the kaibit the cob be the physical body and the kaibit would be the sensory body that man has okay we move up the tree and we come to the third tr triad the bottom triad which the ancient Kemetians refer to as the Sahu. The Sahu aspects correspond to the lower self. This is the lower aspects in man, right? As you see, spheres seven, eight, nine, and 10, they basically work a triangle that is pointing downward you know, towards the earth, right? So, you know, it gives you a clue. So there's this saying that, you know, the higher aspects of the spirit say man is, or I am in the world, but not of the world. <laughs> so down here in the Sahu division of the spirit, man is in the world and of the world. You know, there's a level of uh, immaturity here. Right? This is undeveloped man. This is what the ancient Taoists would have referred to as inferior man. He does not yet see himself in terms of having a responsibility for raising himself or you know, projecting now his consciousness toward the world and a responsibility towards what goes on there. He lives in the world of his imagination, Sphere 7. Uh, his world of beliefs, right, rather than reasoned out um, conclusions, Sphere 8. And there's a level of gullibility or impressionability, 
Sphere 9 where he indiscriminately follows that which is already there or uh, he's susceptible to the whims of the higher spheres like the lower half of Sphere 6 which is a, a negative leadership. He doesn't have the, the reasoning faculty or the just the general evolution to rise above the pitfalls that are created by this negativity that comes in the sphere of leadership. These are what makes up that lower lower triad. We're going to get into his sphere a little later. Um, but right now we're just going to break down the triad right, for the structure of this tree. Okay, now we move up a little bit and we come to the middle triad which would be the administration or the governorship of the being, right? And it consists of spheres four, five, and six. Okay, now here in the ebb division of the spirit, man has evolved, man has risen to an understanding of the higher spheres above it and the lower spheres below. Man comes to see himself as operating by his reasoning and his will now. His, he understands that there is a low faculty within him that must be controlled, that must be guided, or else it will just run him, run him rampant. So this becomes the level of administration, this level of management within the spirit, right? This is the leadership now, the carrying out of the law. This is where the ancient Taoists would have referred to as the superior man versus the inferior man. This is the man who now has responsibility for himself and others and exercises it through his leading of his self and then others. When I say leading of his self, I mean leading of his animal spirit and his lower aspects. The sphere is Heru, which would be the actual leader, right? The sixth sphere. This would be the leader, um, the president, the, the king, the monarch, right? Then you have the sphere five, which would be the the like the military. You know, this is what carries out or, or enforces the laws, right? Carries out the dictates of the president, etc. Right? Um, enforces justice, right? We would call this karma in life, right? This is that principle that that thing that you throw out there into the world will come back to you. Right? Then we have sphere four, which is the actual law, right? This is Ma'at, the Ma'at sphere deals with law and basically you know at the essence the law is love and that is what ma'at is at the essence it's an understanding of an interdependence right and you know again we're going to go into more detail but you know just for understanding the structure the middle triad would be the administrators of the being that which makes the rules and administers what the lower faculties would carry out upper trigram are the actual faculties of God. These are the trinity that makes up what God is, right? You have Oser, which is omnipresence. We have Tehuti, which is omniscience. And you have Seker, which is omnipotence. These are the faculties which make up God in its fullness. And you see these point upward now to what is above. And what is above is Amen. Amen is man's faculty of perfect peace. It is that which is hidden within all things. And this is actually what's, what Osir, which is God on earth, looks to in its identification, right? And it takes us into the next portion.